Hello everybody and welcome to Yomi Tree. I'm Adele and today uh, we're going to use our yoga to tell the story of Sleeping Beauty. When we tell this story you might want to just do it all by yourself um, but we'll try and put in some partner poses so that if you want to work with a partner together to do some parts of the story you can. Okay let's be ready to begin as we always do with my bell. So sit yourself in a comfortable, easy pose, tall back, head high, but shoulders relaxed and hands on your knees. Close your eyes, ready to listen. And when you hear the bell, do a big breath in and out before breathing normally. Are we ready? together over your heart and say our special yoga word which is namaste welcome everybody to our yoga today so we're going to begin by stretching our legs and our back and our shoulders and our arms by flying like a butterfly so we're going to sing a song and stretch our bodies so you put your feet together in your foot sandwich hold your toes try not to slouch your shoulders but sit up tall and have your shoulders down but your, your back and your neck and your head high and then see you've got these butterfly wing shapes with your legs see if you can flap them up and down to stretch them as we sing fly like a butterfly fly like a butterfly fly like a butterfly in the sky fly like a butterfly fly like a butterfly fly like a butterfly in the sky See if we can sleep like a butterfly. See if you can get your head all the way down to your feet. Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. Sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly, sleep like a butterfly through the night. And stretch out your arms to make butterfly wings floating in the air. Dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly, up so high. Dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly, dance like a butterfly, up so high. And we are going to start with a chant. You don't have to do this part, you can fast forward this part if you like. But I think a chant is a nice way to link your breathing and your body's movements um, and your mind together uh, to make them uh, work better when we do our yoga later on. Uh, so this one is um, an affirmation to yourself. That means confirming something that you want to believe inside your body. And I think that we should believe this, that I am happy and that I am good. You are a good person and you can be happy if you choose to be. So I am happy, I am good. Um, and we're going to do this by uh, wagging our fingers. If you get your pointy finger, your index finger, pointing with both hands, and then you're just going to have your uh, elbows down. So we're sitting in our easy position. Our elbows are, are down, pointing down, and our fingers are held high. And we're going to tell ourselves, I am happy. And then we're going to get our thumbs pointing up, like a thumbs up with both hands. And we're going to have our elbows down again, but we're going to sort of push our hands forward. I am good. So then we switch fingers for pointy fingers. I am happy, like you're wagging your fingers. Then switch to your thumbs up. I am good. Let's see if we can do those together and maybe three times. So I am happy with your pointy finger. I am good with your thumbs up. Are we ready? So you're sitting relaxed, your shoulders uh, are relaxed, but your, your back is tall, your head is held high. You're in your easy pose. You're ready to wag your fingers. I am happy, switch. I am good, switch. I am happy, switch. I am good. I am happy, I am good. Well done. 
hopefully that's something you believe in your heart and I hope so too. Okay. Once upon a time, in a kingdom far, far away, there lived a king and a queen in their castle. So let's see if we can be a king first of all. So we're going to stand up in our mountain pose, so our legs are strong, and we're going to see can we put our hands so that, if I come a bit nearer it's easier to see, so you're spreading your fingers wide and you could just uh, put your hands each side of your head like you're making a crown but actually if you touched your little finger and your thumb and you sort of bend your, your hands but keeping your fingers straight now that looks a bit like a crown that you could put on your head to be the king so you're really stretching your fingers okay so we're back in our mountain pose and we're going to put our crown on our head and other people might bow to the king and he may bow back to them so we're going to see if we can bow in a kingly way and um, so we're going to have our body strong our legs straight and just see if we can bow forward here not bending our knees just our hips till we're leaning forward yeah. put your crown on your head stand tall and strong in mountain pose and then just see can you hinge forward at your hips trying not to bend your knees look down at the ground and then back up in your bow so there was a king and a queen so let's see if we can be the queen now so she's going to curtsy so we're going to stand a little bit like we're doing tree pose so strong on one leg with the other leg up on its tiptoes and turned out to the side and then we're just going to see imagine that we're a, um, a queen wearing a beautiful skirt and we're going to bend the knee that's strong and straight and just curtsy so we're going to imagine we're wearing this beautiful dress and curtsy I'll try it one more time imagine you're picking up your skirts and just bob up and down well done so they live together in their castle um, which we're going to try and build using mountain pose which we're going to try and build using the mountain pose so we can stand with our legs in a strong pose we can have our hands on our hearts we could grow our arms as tall as we can make them so they could be like the turrets on the on the towers of the castle or we could stretch our hands straight up and sort of fan our fingers out like the um, a, a, a castle tower that has the straight sides so we can stand so you can see me with your arms straight up in the air like your arms are almost touching your ears but if you'd like to you can try this with a partner and we've had a go at being the castle on our own let's see if there's somebody else in your house you can do it with a partner or in this case we're going to try it with a few of us so we're going to start being a castle wall four people together or you can just practice again on your own so we're going to raise our hands to be the the um, battlements the turrets on the castle and we're going to root our feet to the floor like the strong walls squeeze your tummy muscles and straighten your back and lift your head and then see if we can stand still and strong at the walls of the castle and then we could if we wanted and you could try this too either just with one person or with a few we can make a circle so if there's two of you, you could just face each other and try again so lift your arms to make the, the up and down battlements of the castle wall and then strong legs stand still strong straight So the king, let's see if we can make our king again, crown on the head, standing tall, bow forwards. The king and the queen, one leg strong, the other leg tiptoes out to the side, bring up your skirts and curtsy. So the king and queen.
had a baby girl. And like most babies, she cried a lot. So let's imagine, and we're going to do a, a move where we rock the baby. You have to imagine um, that you're going to hold a baby like you do when they cry and rock them gently side to side to stop them from feeling sad. But what we're going to do is imagine, you're going to have a great imagination, that our leg is our baby. So you're going to gently pick up your leg so the other one can be bent at the knee or sort of out straight in front of you. You're going to pick up your leg and try and hold it as close to your body like a real baby. You might even hook your foot into your elbow um, on the opposite side and then gently support your knee with the arm that's on the same side and just see if you can rock your leg side to side gently like you would do a baby. Ah, oh, because you don't want the baby to cry. That's it. So then you gently let go of your leg, give it a little shake, and we're going to try rocking the baby on the other side. So you're going to pick this leg up, see if you can maybe hook your foot into your arm or as near to your elbow as you can. Hold it like you would hold a baby and gently rock side to side. And you should feel when you do this that your, your thighs, the tops of your legs, a stretch in your hips are gently being stretched. You should actually feel quite nice rocking the baby. And sometimes the princess was a happy baby, especially when she could hear singing. She really liked singing. So we're going to be a happy baby now. This pose is called Happy Baby. We're going to lay down on our backs, imagining like we're a baby in their cot or on a mat on the floor and they're often happy to just rock and roll around. So you can bend your knees up, your feet are in the air and if you reach through the middle of your knees and hold onto your feet and your knees point out to the side, hold onto your feet or just hook your fingers around your toes and you're going to gently rock side to side. You could stretch your feet up higher, you could put your feet down lower and just have a little rock and a roll around on the mat like a happy baby. Goo goo ga 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 ga. Now the kingdom held a party to celebrate the arrival of the new baby princess. And they threw the biggest banquet in all the land. So a banquet is like a huge table of party food, all the food you can imagine. So we're going to see if we can turn our bodies into a table, imagining it's a huge long table in the castle that's filled with delicious food. So we're going to do our tabletop pose with our feet flat on the floor in front of us, our knees bent, our hands pointing uh, with our fingers pointing forward, just resting behind our bottom. You can spread your fingers wide if it helps you. Strengthen your arms, ready to push your tummy up to the sky in our tabletop pose. So your tummy uh, and the tops of your legs are going to need to be quite flat in order to hold all of that delicious food. And the king and the queen and all their guests, they got to sit on beautiful chairs around this uh, table full of food. So let's see if we can do our chair pose. We just stand with our feet a little bit apart. Stretch your fingers straight up to the ceiling and then see if you can imagine sitting down in a chair. If I turn to the side, you can see what that looks like. So you don't really want to lean too far forward. If you can help it, try and keep your back straight. Oh, I've got to lean a little bit forwards. Sit down as far down as you can in your chair and imagine tucking into all that delicious food at the party. Now, three magical fairies were invited along to the party as they also lived in the kingdom and they were known for their kindness. Each one was going to give the princess a gift. 
let's learn to be a fairy uh, first. So it's a bit like we're going to do the tree pose, but we're not actually going to lift our foot in the full balance. So one foot rooted, one leg rooted to the ground, the other up on tiptoes and turned out to the side, like when we did the, the Queen's curtsy. You can bring your toes in as close to your body as you can. It makes it more of a balance, but just keep your toes on the floor. Or you can even do what we do sometimes and put one set of toes on the other. If you want to really work your body, squeeze your tummy muscles and make it more of a balance. Just fine like this. I want you to put one hand on your hip and then Im imagine in the other hand that you're holding your wand and I want you to whoosh, just make some circles with your wand. Super. And so the first fairy came up to see the baby princess in her cot, in her crib, and she came to give her gift. So um, we're going to say bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. And she's going to say that this baby princess shall be kind and full of grace. Okay, the second uh, fairy is going to come to see the baby in her crib, in her cot, and she's ready to cast a spell. Now I'm going to switch legs to do this so that I'm stretching both sides of my body. So I'm going to now root this leg to the floor, up on my tiptoes on the other side, standing tall. I'm even going to switch hands for my wand. And we're going to do, ready, bibbidi, bobbidi, boo. And the second gift from the fairies is that she's going to be beautiful and loved by everyone. Now, before the third fairy could give her gift, there was a loud crack and a flash of light and the evil fairy appeared. So, let's imagine we're going to scrunch up as small as we can in a squat. So I'm on my, uh, my feet are together and because of that I've had to lift my heels up a little bit. It's hard to squat with flat feet. But as long as we're squatting down on the floor and then we're going to count to three together. See if we can jump our body into a star, like a flash of light. So your legs are going to jump out and your hands are going to jump out into a star. And then the evil fairy is going to appear. So one, two, three and to be the evil fairy she's going to we're going to do something called an eagle pose so our body's all twisty and that seems quite evil so we're going to stand like we did um when we're ready for tree pose so i've got one set of feet uh, toes upon our tiptoes a strong leg and see can you then cross those toes over in front of you so that your toes are now at the other side and then get your body strong squeeze your tummy muscles so it's a balance again but we're keeping our toes on the floor and then we're going to twist our arms around each other now how you do this doesn't really matter but there, there, there are ways of doing it so if we put our arms in front of us so our elbows are bent and our fingers point up to the ceiling but then can we put one elbow to sort of rest over the top of the other one? Now you can just do it like that and the backs of your hands touch each other. Or you can try and turn your hands so that they face each other. The two palms won't be exactly together because one arm is higher than the other. But um, your fingers of one hand might touch the palm of the other. So you can twist your hands around so you're fully twisting. Then stand tall and straight, have your highest hand in front of your nose. Now if you want to, you can lift those toes that were just helping you to balance just off the floor. You can even, like we did the chairs, you can even have a go at sitting down a little bit. Or you can just keep your toes on the floor. And this is the evil fairy. And she is not happy because she wasn't invited to the party. Basically because she's not very nice and they didn't want her there. But she's really cross now. 
because she wanted to give her gift to the princess. Now she's going to give her gift anyway and she's going to um, give her something not very nice. So we're going to see, can we do a not a very nice laugh like a ah ha 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 like a witch? And then she's going to give her uh, her gift. So you can uncurl your arms. I'm going to leave one up in front of my face and hold my wand with the other. And I'm going to just do a pew and say, this princess shall indeed be beautiful and full of grace and loved by all, but on her 16th birthday, she shall prick her finger on a spinning wheel and die. Oh, can you do your evil laugh again? Ah, ha, 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 ha. Well, that really has spoiled the party and it's not very nice. The evil fairy disappeared in a flash and everyone was left stunned and not knowing what to do. But the third fairy still had her gift to give. And so, let's be the third fairy. It doesn't matter which side of the body you choose to use to be your fairy. Up on your tiptoes, standing tall, one hand on your hip and your wand. Let's do a bibbity, bobbity, boo. And her gift is that the princess shall not die, but her and the whole of the kingdom will fall asleep for a hundred years. It doesn't make the king and queen feel much better, but as long as she doesn't die, they're, they're happier. So many years have passed and the princess grew into a beautiful girl who loved to dance and sing and be happy. We're going to see if we can be the princess by using our dancer pose. So we're going to, I'm going to stand facing sideways so you can see it more easily, but you can face me, that's absolutely fine. So it's another balance. We're going to glue one solid leg to the floor, one foot rooted to the floor. Just have a little practice. Can you lift the other knee and balance? Put your toes down again, lift your knee, just see if you can balance. This time, can you lift your foot behind you and reach around with the hand at the same side to just hold your foot? And if you wobble and you're near a chair or a sofa or an, another person, just rest your hand on them. It helps you to balance. And when you've got your balance, you might let go and have a practice. So we're going to stand like this. Now this is fine, we can practice this balance. But if you're feeling steady, you could reach your other hand up to the sky. And then if you want to, you could try leaning forward so our knee isn't bending on this strong balanced leg. But we're trying to hinge forwards, still stretching out. And can you push the back hand away with your foot till you're really stretching and strong? Now you can hold on to something and that's absolutely fine. But if you want to practice, you could let go and see if you can balance. So the princess spent all her days dancing around the castle, enjoying herself. So I'm going to try and be the princess with my other leg. Strong leg, lift my foot behind. See if you can get your balance. Stretch out, hold on to something if you like. Lean forward, push your foot back, push your hand back. And stretch. Well done everybody. On her 16th birthday, the king and queen had by this time got rid of all of the spinning wheels all across the land. Nobody was allowed to spin and make cloth and uh, make wool anymore. They were so worried of what would happen. But the princess, skipping through the castle, looking all around, she came across an old woman spinning at a wheel. Of course, she didn't know that it was the evil fairy in disguise. So let's be the evil fairy. See if you can remember. One strong leg on your tiptoes, cross your feet over, bend your arms and cross your elbows and just rest the backs of your hands together if you like. 
You could even do a ah ha 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 ha. Another princess. Let's see if we can be the princess. Your dancer pose. You can hold on to something if you like. Foot behind you. Stretch out. Going to imagine she pricks her finger. Ouch! And then can you just gently fall to the floor and fall asleep? Now, because of the third fairy's wish, the princess didn't die. She just fell asleep and all of the people in all of the kingdom fell asleep too. Just wherever they were, whatever they were doing, fell asleep in that position. And so it went on for a hundred years and around the castle walls grew a great thick forest of trees. So we can be a tree, we've done this many times. I'm going to balance on this leg for a change. See if I can make my tree. Hands on my heart, grow my branches. And if you've got other people in the room, you could link hands and make a line of trees, a circle of trees, to represent the forest that grew around the kingdom. So you need to stand first of all with your feet flat on the floor, hold hands ready uh, to raise your branches of your trees around the castle walls. Then balance onto one foot. You might all want to do it on the same foot. So we're going to go onto our left foot, Patrick, onto your left foot. Raise the toes of your right foot, turn your leg out to the side and see if you can just balance. Use each other for balance. And try and keep each other strong a twisty forest growing all around. We did when we were the castle before, we're going to see if we can, because there's more than um, one of us, we can see if we can make a, a circle so that we are the circle of forests surrounding the kingdom. Um, you could do this just with two again facing each other or try it with more than two. So this time again, yeah, I'm going to switch legs this time, I'm going to go into my uh, right foot this time and raise my left toes. Jeez. Hold hands and raise your hands to be strong Now one day, a handsome prince came riding through the forest and was surprised to see through its thick branches what looked like a castle. So let's see if we can be the prince first of all. So we're going to be a warrior, a warrior prince. So um, along your mat, if you take a stride forwards and back, so you've got a big wide-legged stride and then if you just bend the front leg, you're making a lunge. So you're stretching the back leg, you're bending the front leg, and you're bending forward. Now, if you make your body strong, your shoulders tall, like a warrior, or in this case, a prince, you could put one hand on your hip, and in the other hand, imagine holding your sword. And in fact, this prince is going to cut down some of the forest so he can get to the castle. So if we imagine, whoosh, you could even lean forward, whoosh, bending that knee, whoosh, whoosh, like you're cutting down the trees in the forest that's grown around the castle. So, um, this prince arrived on a horse. So let's see if we can go on our horse. So our legs are a little bit apart, like we could be sitting on a horse. Put your hands on your heart and bend your knees, so like we did the chairs, so you're sitting on the horse. And then we can imagine if you were riding a horse, you would move up and down gently. So stretching your legs here as we move up and down. And that's the prince's horse. So the prince has chopped the trees down one by one by one. So let's just imagine that you are all the trees and I am the prince coming to chop you down. Or you could do this with other people in your house so that one is the prince chopping down the trees. But um, if you all make your tree pose and then I'm going to be the prince and I'm going to swish my sword and chop you down. So don't do a big crash to the floor, just gently fall like a tree that's been chopped. So you make your tree, I'm going to make my prince a stride forward Hold my sword, 
and my knee. Right, are you ready to fall? Whoosh, 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 whoosh. Did you all fall down? Well done. Now, the prince can see the castle. Now he's moved all the trees away. So let's just stand strong in our castle. You can stand in the partner pose with your other people in your house, holding hands, being strong castle walls. Now, when the prince went inside, he saw the people of the kingdom all fast asleep. And he was very confused. He was looking all around and he came across a beautiful girl lying on a bed, fast asleep like everybody else. So we're going to lie down. Can you cross one arm over to the opposite shoulder and lie still like the princess has been for a hundred years? Now, the prince finds her so beautiful that he can't help but give her a kiss. Can we be a prince? Can you remember? So bend that front knee, but instead of holding your sword this time, can you blow two kisses? Let's get your hands ready. We're going to breathe in and then blow a kiss with one hand. Breathe in, blow a kiss with the other hand. And to his surprise, the princess wakes up and so do all the other people in the kingdom. The king, the prince and the princess fall in love. So let's just see if we can be the prince. I'm going to turn around the other side. So different leg forwards and back. Stretch my knee. I'm going to hold my sword and look proud as the uh, prince and princess get married because they're so in love. So there's the prince. Our princess has awoken. So I'm going to see if I can do my princess balance. Stretching hand forward, pushing a foot back, holding on to something if you need to. Woken from her sleep, all of the people, her mum and dad and everybody also awake and ready to have the most fabulous time as they all live happily ever after. And that's the end of our story. So we're going to get ready to uh, relax just like the, the princess uh, was sleeping in the story. So lying on our backs, you can get a teddy to help if you would look onto our backs. Lying on the floor, sinking into the mat. And we could think about our story and try and imagine in our mind and we rerun the story in our heads and think about which yoga poses did we really enjoy, which ones would we like to practice some more. Maybe the balances are good to practice until you can hold them for a count of three perhaps or even longer remembering to practice with both legs for the balance. So we began our story with the king and the queen and the castle and the baby and lots of guests at a party. Maybe you like the, the fairy pose, casting the spells. Maybe you like the evil fairy pose, twisting your body. Keep the third fairy, save them all with her thoughtful spell. Queen didn't know that the evil witch would come back on the princess's 16th birthday. That she would make sure that her, her wish was granted. tale 
realize his sleeping beauty ends happily ever after. And the prince and the princess have fallen in love and the evilness is gone from the story. to slowly wake up our bodies to start moving your hands and your feet giving them a wiggle wiggling your toes wiggling your fingers so we're going to try a, a breathing exercise to finish so if you um, bend your knees but rest your feet on the floor so you're still relaxed and just see if you've got enough room to stretch your arms overhead onto the floor behind you and then bring them back down by your side. So we're going to breathe in. And then as we breathe out, we lift our arms over our head, stretch out onto the floor behind. And then as we breathe in, we bring our arms back down to the floor by our bottom. And then as we breathe out, our arms go back overhead and breathe in. As you breathe out you can bring yourself up to sitting. I hope you enjoyed our story today and that you'll come back uh, to do some more yoga stories, more yoga adventures uh, with, it, with me on another day. Let's be ready to sing our song for the end of our yoga session. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on. May the long time sun shine upon you, all love surround you, and the pure light within you guide your way on, guide your way on guide your way on put your hands together for our special yoga word namaste thank you everybody i hope to see you again soon <laughs>